Hi, I'm Megan Dorsey with College Prep Results. Today, I'm starting my first in a series of videos discussing high school course selection. I have a lot of clients come to me and ask, what should we sign up for for our high school courses to maximize our potential for college admissions four years from now? Today's topic is perhaps the least exciting to many students, and that's your foundational or core academic courses. More students are excited about electives. Those are the things they want to take, the fun things, the interesting exploratory topics. What we're looking for in preparing a four-year academic plan is to have a balance between those fun and exploratory electives, core academic courses, and other graduation requirements. An analogy I often make is that electives are a little bit like dessert. You have to have a nutritious meal before you can have a dessert. If you load up your entire plate with dessert, you're probably not going to get the results you want. And that's true with our academic courses as well. The other thing to think about is later on in your high school time, maybe in junior or senior year, you may be tempted to trade a core academic course for an elective. It maybe even seems academic in nature and interesting, but you shouldn't do it. Your core academic courses are going to be the foundation of your high school transcript. Here's what I'm talking about when I talk about core academic courses. And you can see I've started my sample four-year plan here. But your core academic courses include English, math, science, history. Now that's a broad topic. It may be referred to as social studies, topics along that area. And I'm gonna make an argument that your other languages, Spanish, French, German languages other than English, any language other than English should be considered your fifth core course. The guideline for these for a college bound student is to take four years of these core courses. Now it's pretty standard to say, I need four years of English, math, science, and history. I am in Texas and the graduation requirement in Texas is only two years of a language other than English. Ideally, you would push that. I tell my clients three years is non-negotiable, four years is optimal, unless it really creates a horrible burden. So think about that as you're planning for your four years. Couple of things to think about. Four years generally means that each year you're in high school, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, you'll be taking these courses. So let's say, for example, you got an early start on your high school math sequencing by taking algebra in eighth grade. It doesn't mean you finish and have a free period in your schedule later. It just means you have the opportunity to get to a higher level math come graduation time than maybe some of your peers who did not start. So four years doesn't simply mean four credits. The assumption is you'll be taking those courses each of the years that you are attending high school. The other thing is I have seen students double up or maybe take some courses in the summer, but it's not typical and maybe not recommended. You might be able to do this in some of the courses that aren't really sequential. It's very difficult to double up in math. I know some people have done that with like an algebra two and a geometry, but again, that's a challenge. Sometimes I see it happen in history. You don't necessarily have to have world history in order to take US history, vice versa. But if you are interested in doing that, I would say you need a compelling reason and you need to talk to your school counselor to do it. I had a student who did this uh, two years ago because she was interested in getting into a specialized sort of pre-med program that her school district offered that allowed her as a senior to go on ambulance uh, calls and be certified as a paramedic. But in order to do that, she needed to spend almost half day in that particular program. So she did plan and double up her junior year taking some academic classes and then taking a couple of things the summer before her senior year to do it. But typically 
when we're writing out a plan, we're thinking each of these courses in their proper sequence is going to take one spot per year in your schedule. The sequence of courses may vary from school to school and district to district. I'm in the greater Houston area and I can think of many schools that offer different things. It's usually not in English and math. We usually say English one, two, three, four, pretty straightforward. The math sequence usually has algebra, geometry, algebra two, some type of pre-calculus or trigonometry before moving on to calculus. Those are pretty standard, very much like languages other than English. You might take Spanish one, two, three, and then four. Pretty straightforward. Our sciences start bringing in a little bit more variety, but I will tell you that typically high school students take biology, chemistry, and physics, and pretty typically in that order. But you want to pay attention to what your school is doing and what's typical for students of your particular grade. The histories are where we find a lot of variety. I can look around in my own area and say, there are many schools where freshmen, ninth graders, are taking world geography or world history. Some even may be US history. There can be a great deal of variety. You might also find different names for some of these courses, depending on where you are. Maybe you attend a school that has combined an English history into a greater humanities class. Take a look and use this as a basic template, but get information from your school or your school counselor to find out the particular sequencing. I think a good goal is to be taking courses with your peers so that you aren't the only freshman sitting in senior government. I will in my next video talk more specifically about other considerations and graduation requirements that you should consider when selecting your high school courses. If you'd like more information, collegeprepresults.com 